All right, so if you're in my room, you're not talking. So basically, welcome, and my name is Doc. I'm going to go over some things with you in terms of quadratics that's going to help us hopefully be more successful coming up on your district assessment. Now, we're only going to be looking at three AKS. AKS are called academic knowledge and skills. That's what we use in order for us to be um, successful in what your teachers teach you. So we're specifically going to be looking at quadratics today, graphing quadratic functions, understanding the key um, pieces for that, as well as looking at domain and range. I'm going to go over a couple slides, but the bulk of what we're going to be doing is on a Kahoot. So once the Kahoot goes live, I'm going to actually need you to sign in and join, and then I'll teach through us doing the Kahoot. Okay, so first and foremost is understanding when we have our, um, when a function is increasing or when a function is decreasing. So it might be a little bit hard to see this slide, but basically, hopefully you remember that, and if you are an um, algebra teacher and you want to chime in, please feel free to chime in because it's been a while since I've taught algebra one. But as you might remember, whenever we are looking at increase, we're looking at the vertex. And the vertex is either going to be the max or the min. It's going to be when something, the turning point of a graph. It's kind of like if you're driving or on a roller coaster and you go down the roller coaster and then it goes up, that would be the min. That's the lowest point on that part of the coaster that you're going to go. You can't go any lower or else you probably crash. Same thing when you go up. When you're in the roller coaster and you're going up the roller coaster at six flags, once you hit that top and you're about ready to go down, that's the max. That's kind of what the min and max is. When we talk about how a function is increasing or decreasing, that's kind of looking at what happens after the vertex. Are we kind of moving up? Are we kind of moving down? So in that blue picture, and you'll get the notes also on my website, um, I talk about, hold on one second. Yeah. Um, so basically what we're looking at is as it's going up, what's happening? So if we see this in this blue graph right here, we can tell that from this vertex going up from the negative one to infinity, it's going to keep increasing. When we look here from infinity going down, it's decreasing from negative infinity going down. Also, we look at our X and Y values. When is something positive versus negative? So when that's when we're looking at what our Y values are. So if we look at the X axis right here, that's when Y equals zero, we can see that anything above it the y values are positive. Anything below it, the y values are negative. Moving on. All right. So this is some of the things that the county had wanted you to know when it comes to quadratics. Um, basically speaking, I'm going to kind of move that out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. You've learned, hopefully, three different types of forms. You've learned standard form, intercept form, and vertex form. When we do standard form, that is the easiest way to find the y-intercept. Basically, you have ax squared plus bx plus c, and whatever that c is, that's the y-intercept, because really all you're doing is you're, all you're doing is you're plugging zero in for x, okay? So that's kind of what's happening over here. Now, right here, when we plug zero in for x, all we're left with is the C, and that tells us our y-intercept. So when we're graphing it, that's going to give us this point right here. In order to find our x-intercept, that's when you're going to have to factor. And when you factor, we know we get our factor pieces, and then we have it x equals something, and then that's where it gets our points on that x-axis. We're going to do examples. Don't worry about it. The vertex form is this bottom form, and that's what we really like when we want to find the vertex. Because whatever yeah. letter is in here, that's our H value. And then whatever letter is hanging out, our H means X. Whatever letter is on the outside, the K, that's going to be for your number. That's going to be the other point of the vertex. So let's look at another example. All right, here are some examples of quadratic functions. Here you can see in the first graph going down, we've got the purple. We know that it has a minimum because it's like we're on the roller coaster, zooming down and up. So that's where the minimum, the vertex is going to be our minimum point. That vertex is also where the axis of symmetry is. Now, here's a trick. If you look at your formula sheet, you're going to see the quadratic formula. When I used to teach Algebra 1, I used to make my kids sing it to row, row, row your boat. It's like x equals opposite of b plus or minus radical. I'm not going to keep singing. But that opposite of b over 2a is... It's the formula that you need to do the problem. So really, hold on one second, we got to let people in. So really, 
when you're doing this, you don't have to remember what's that axis of symmetry. All you have to remember how to do. All you have to remember to do is look at the formula sheet, cross off the b squared minus 4ac crap, and you're left with the negative b over 2a. That's what you're going to get to get your x of symmetry. That's also going to give you the x value for your vertex to plug stuff into the calculator. All right. Then again, the up-down behavior. And here's an official question right here. Here we have our formula, the x squared minus 4x plus 3. Remember, that last term is going to give us the y-intercept. That's why they plotted it over here. Okay, it's 0, 3. When it's factored, we get the negative 3, negative 1. So that tells us our zeros are going to be at positive 3 and positive 1. And then for the vertex form, if we were to do it that way, we could easily see the point of the vertex and then where our min is going to be. So just summarizing real quick here, if we look at the letter H graph, we can see that it's going to have a minimum. The letter I graph has a maximum. And the letter J graph has a minimum. But let's face it. We're not here to talk about that type of stuff. We're here to play Kahoot. So please take out your cell phones right now. Let me get the Kahoot started so that you guys can play along. Hopefully this is being projected so that you can do it. We'll be doing math as we go. Um, I'm going to set it up for you to put fake names in so we don't have to deal with drama. Because, you know, some people, if you watch my social media video, knows that you kind of can, yeah, be a little cray-cray. Um, so go ahead, take out your cell phones, please. Especially if you're in my classroom, that's the expectation right here. And we are going to play Kahoot and learn a little bit more about math.
Joyful Gecko, congratulations. What is the range? Remember when we're talking about range, we're looking up and down. So first you're going to look at the graph and you're going to see where is the turning point. The turning point in this case is the minimum. It's like we're on the roller coaster and we're going down. We turn at two. Does the function y equals negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 3 open up or down? When you have equations like this, this is when you're going to pay attention to whatever that a term is. If that a term is positive, it's going to point up. If the a term is negative, it's going to point down. Okay? So that's what you have to remember. You always just look at what is that sign in front of our A. If it's positive, it's pointing up, which means it would look like this. If it's negative, it's going to be down. Next. All right. Ooh, we have a new leader. All right. If we have this equation, y equals negative x squared. This is a minute. You have a minute to do this. Plus 10x plus 6. Model the diver's height in feet. What was the diver's initial height? Now, anytime we do things with diving, things like that, it's always going to be involving time. And because it says the word initial, initial means starting. So if it's starting, how much time has passed? No time has passed because you're just starting. So if it says what's the initial height, well, if we put zero in for x here, we get zero. If we put zero in for x here, we get zero. So then we just have 6. So what's 0 plus 0 plus 6? That's literally all you're doing. 0 plus 0 plus 6. That's going to be your initial height. Your initial height, because it's what happens when it first starts. And your time would be 0. Okay. The following graph models the diver jumping. What's the diver's maximum height? So think of the roller coaster. How high did it go? When we look at graphs, the time, anytime we have situations like this, the time is what's going to go across. The height is going to be up and down. So if we want to know what's the top height, what's the highest height, this is where the highest height was. Okay? We know But the highest height is, where does it go at the top? What's that map? Ooh, we have a new leader in the house. If you are asked to find when a ball will reach the maximum height, what are you trying to find? When it hits the very top, what are you looking for? Are you looking at the Y value of the vertex? The X value of the vertex? Remember, the vertex is the turning point. You care about, or do you care about when it hits the y intercept? Nope, that's when the time is zero. Or when it hits the x intercept? Nope, that's when the ball lands. So you're basically here about the vertex. Ooh, well, let's look at this again. Okay, so before we go on, I want to talk about this. If when we have our graph, right, we have a ball that goes up into the air. Okay, when it wants us to find. Okay, when it says when it reaches the maximum height. So remember the going across this time, up and down is your height. So when does it hit the top height? Does it hit the top height when you initially throw it? No. Does it hit the top height when it hits the ground, the x-intercept? No. Here we have our xy for the vertex. But what ends up happening is that xy actually is the x represents the time that passed and the y is what we want. The y represents the height. Moving on. Aquatic penguins still in the lead, but it's close. Let's see what happens next. The graph represents a ball being tossed. How long will it take to reach the maximum height? 
Remember again, time goes across, height goes up and down. Time goes across, height goes up and down. Okay, as we talked about, when we look at this, going across is our time. My students are going to stop talking because your voices are picking up on the recording. Here is going to be the height. So if we want the maximum height, it's going to be at seven feet. But how much time passed? One second. Thank you. Sorry, guys, you just are in a different situation because I'm recording, so I can't have you talking. All right, next. Ooh, we have a new leader, Genius Stable. Ooh. What are the roots of this function? Okay, anytime they say roots, there's two things. One, you can put it in the graphing calculator and pull up the table. Or you can factor it, and that's what we're going to look at in a minute and a half to do this. When you factor it, you're looking for what number is in common in both. In this case, That would leave me with T squared minus 4. Now, I think it's T squared minus 4, and I remember there's something called a difference of two squares. So when you have the difference of two squares, we know we're going to have T and T. Ooh, not like T and T, but T and T. And then we know one is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. That negative 5 is just taken out and doesn't mean a thing. Then you have to think about, okay, So now, all you do is that each one of these equals zero. T plus two equals zero. How do you get the room? Well, you subtract two from both sides, so one of our rooms is going to be T equals negative two, and that will be the correct answer. The other root, you would add two to both sides. I'm sorry, you would, I said it wrong. This should be minus. You would add two to both sides, and you get positive two. So you should hit yellow, hit yellow, hit yellow. Okay. Good. Genius Sable in the lead still, 9 of 25. Okay, what is the x-intercept? Remember, anytime it says x-intercept, again, it wants you to factor. When you factor, the first thing you need to look for is what do they have in common? What can I take out? In this case, it has a negative because we don't ever want to have a negative x. And it has an x. So that comes out here. x squared divided by negative x. Well, the negatives cancel, one of the x's cancel, I'm going to be left with plain x. 6x divided by negative x, well, a positive divided by a negative is negative. And then, the x's cancel, so I'm left with negative 6. So these, so far, are my points. My points. But now you have to take each one of these and set them equal to 0. Well, if I divide 0 by negative 1, I'm still going to get 0. So I know one of them is going to be 0. When I have x minus 6 and I set it equal to 0, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So now I have this point at 6, and obviously because it's an intercept, your y value is going to be 0. So that is what you're going to do there. Come on, I learned the answer. Eight seconds. Okay, so we're going Good job. Let's keep going. Six of us. Super Dingo is in second place. Sable is still in the lead. Which is a zero of the function? Okay. So again, we're going to factor. This is another one that we have 90 seconds for now. Some of your teachers taught you something called the area model. Honestly, I'm not very good at the area model. Excuse you. What I do is I have always done it just by doing kind of like reverse multiplying binomial. I know that there's an x squared, so because there's an x squared, I'm going to have x and x. I know that this sign is negative, so I know one of mine is going to be positive, one's going to be negative. I know the only way I can get 10 is 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. And I know I'm subtracting because of this, so I have to have negative 5 and positive 2.
start the map. Then you set each one of these equal to zero. So we've got x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 5. And then you just throw a zero at the end. So one is going to be negative 2, 0, and the other one's going to be positive 5, 0. And there you go. That's it. Come on, come on. Seven people, nine seconds. What are you doing? What are you doing? Three seconds. Ah. There we go. Okay. I think some of you are trying to get in, but you don't have it yet. All right, remember, let's talk about range. Range, again, is up and down. So the first thing we have to look at is what is the highest or lowest point. We know that our highest point is right here. It's at positive 2. So we know that it cannot go any higher than positive 2. Can it go lower than positive 2? Oh, yeah. That's going to be our negative infinity. Remember, any would be curved. Yeah, we got to talk about this one again. Okay, this is your maximum point. So the highest point you can have is two for the range. This right here is anything less than two works. That's why it's negative infinity to two. Okay, next one. What is the axis of symmetry? So, the axis of symmetry is what is the line that it can fold perfectly and match up. Now, it's easier kind of just to look at it. That's it. That's your axis of symmetry. That's where you can fold it in half and perfectly match up. That's the x value of the turn. So, that's the line. What number? I kind of covered it with my marker. What number? That one was super quick. Got it. Let's see. Ooh, Snail is in the lead. New shape. 30 seconds. It says, in this graph, this model for Rocky being launched, what is the practical range? Remember, range is height. Range is up and down. So what's the lowest it can be? What's the highest it can be? What's the lowest it can be? What's the highest it can be? If it's a rock. Ooh, why are we down to only three people? You make me want to stop. We might stop. All right, so here you can't, if you launch a rocket, it's not like you're going to launch a rocket from underneath the ground, usually, and it wouldn't land deep into the ground. So a realistic range is going to be from zero feet to the highest point, which was 16. All right, if I don't have more than, like, four people playing, we're going to stop after this question. What is the axis of symmetry? Okay, again, you're looking at where is the turning point. After you've had the turning point, that's going to be that line, that x value is going to be your correct answer.